handling and uh, also it's showing you this analytical lines for your structural model. So how it will be visible here, there is an option hide analytical model or visible analytical model. So if you click on this, so analytical model will be hidden and you have a, a analytical model view where you will be viewing only the analytical model. OK, so analytical model, these are basically the. Uh, for basically for all your structural uh, components, uh, it shows you the uh, different color like uh, where you have the connection and momentum and uh, forces are there. It's basically shows you with this uh, lines and uh, this tricolors. OK. Uh, so for that we have this uh, analytical model view and we have this 3D view and within this 3D view you can uh, highlight this sh show analytical model. OK. And here in the visibility. You if you go to the. Uh, view template. You will see that this uh, there is some uh, settings. View template. Second. Yes. Uh, so there are some uh, analytical combination for analytical model. There are some uh, these analytical isolated 3D. So some uh, view templates are created to make analytical model visible in particular uh, view. So you can choose these view templates. Okay, and there you can go for this uh, override annotation analytical override an analytical model categories so you can go for this analytical model categories and there you can choose what will be visible and what will be uh, hidden so you can choose from this okay now uh, let me talk about this uh, Uh, OK, let me go to this uh, structure. Let me go to this structure tab and there we have this structural settings. So for uh, all your uh, structural members uh, for your steel members and connections, we have some symbolic representation settings. Suppose if you have if you have the detail level. So if you if you have the detail level set to cores, so then uh, in a particular view, let me go to level one, and there you can see that this is a course, a detail level course, and if I choose detail level fine, so for that, uh, some structural uh, members will be uh, visible as line, or the uh, reinforcement will be visible as line. But if you choose uh, detail level fine, so you will you will get the uh, thickness and uh, the 3D view of it. But if you choose the detail level as course, so you will see this symbolic representation as a line and all. So for that, we have this settings, uh, this symbolic cutback distance for the brace, for beam and truss, for column. We have all this for connection symbols. What will be the display symbol? beams and braces or column base or column top. What will be the uh, connection for connection symbols? What will be the display symbol? So beams and braces is the default one. And for these connection type, there is these option. OK. And uh, for bracings also, uh, plan representations are there if you are providing any brace. So for that, we have this uh, show brace above. Uh, if there is any uh, brace placed above, what will be the symbol there? So for these are the settings. And you can click on OK. Now if I if I go to any 3D view or any plan view, I place some bracings like this brace. 
uh, so for that what I'll do uh, I'll go to view and there I will create a framing elevation okay so framing elevation is uh, a particular uh, for a particular grid okay so it will create view for this particular area only uh, for this particular uh, all the elements which are placed uh, in this grid it will create that so here right click and you can go to elevation view and there you can see it like uh, this is the region from that to that it will show so from two to three it will be visible right so here you can see right and if i go for uh fine so now you can see all these uh with proper thickness and all and if you go for course so there you can see this is these are the um, symbolic lines right here you can see so now let's go with the fine and if i go for uh, structure go for brace and let's go with this one let's go with this default one and let's uh, place let me place so I'll go I'll go from this to midpoint of this and then also from the end of this midpoint. OK. And if I choose the cores, so you will see this line for this break for this bracing, right? And if I go to the level one, so now you can see that this is uh, for for these bracings uh, let me go to the structure sorry this is uh, level 1 right I have placed on level two, so I have to switch into level two. Yeah, now here you can see that uh, this showing you this structural framing, which we have recently placed. This is this structural framing that that brace we have placed. OK, and it's showing you. This. It, uh, this symbol, right? And if you go for uh, go for fine detail, so you will uh, get that original model. So go to the to uncheck this show brace above, so it will not show you any uh, braces over there. All right, so it will not show you any braces symbol. Fine. So for the plan representation, the parallel line offset is provided. If you don't provide any offset, so it will be placed at the central location of that object. So you can provide the parallel line offset, so it uh, it will not uh, clash with each other. So you can identify, and you will know that uh, there are uh, offset provided for this uh, when when we will see through plan view. Okay, and uh, now we can go for okay now, and now we can go to level 1a and uh, for the level 1a you can get back your fine level fine details and you can go to 3d view there it is placed now if i activate the analytical model if i go for the show analytical model so here you can see that uh, for this bracings the analytical model for this it's slightly slightly out of this right slightly out of this model right it has some offset so for that we have some settings go to this structure and here we have this analytical model settings so analytical model settings we have this automatic checks 
and the tolerance we have. So for this analytical, you can see that analytical to physical model distance is one fit. It's uh, really far enough, so you can change it. Let me show you uh, like four inches. You can go for four inches and you can click on OK. OK, and again come to this one. And here we have all these uh, settings for member supports. Check the, these are uh, the settings. OK, these should be checked. And let me click on OK. And now if you if you select this one and you can increase this till. So it's uh, OK now. Now let me. Go to the analytical model there and you can select it. Here you can see that the start alignment method is auto detect. That means uh, as per the settings, it, it's detecting. Uh, but here you can choose the projection. So what will happen? Uh, that it will it will project as per the model. Here it should be projected, right? Here it should be projected. So as per the model, it should uh, it will go. So what will be the start uh, and uh, end? So you select projection. It's fine. We can ignore this warning. So, so here you can see that this one is projected and the start point of this. And for the end point also, for end alignment method also, you can go for the projection and it will it's projecting at the same midpoint. And for this also, you can do the same. By pressing tab here, you can select it, select it and then go for this start alignment method projection. And also for the end alignment method projection. OK, so this way. Fine. Now let me select it, select this line again. And here we have this uh, start Y projection and start Z projection. So that is uh, set to location line. That means at the center it will be. And here you can give all these left of element, center of element, grid A or B. So this thing you can mention. And for the end also, start and end. And uh, for this uh, start release, that is right now selected as uh, user defined. And uh, if you want to uh, define the uh, Y axis and uh, the uh, Z axis, right, for start and end. So you can uh, you can uh, go for like uh, this check. You can you can check this. So it will be uh, generally it will be free. OK, it will be free end from that. And if you uncheck, so it will be fixed. All right, so here also you have this fixed option. So now you can see that when I have selected fix, this start is unchecked right now. Let me undo it. Select this again and let me show you. Now here you can see that the user defined here it is checked. If I go for uh, these are checked right now and uh, if you uncheck, that means these are fixed. And when you check the that means these are at the uh, released. OK, so here we have this option uh, start release and end release. So you can choose from this. So end release also you can go for pinned or what it will be. OK, so the moment uh, if you go for pinned, so the momentum will be fixed. All right, so here we have this bending moment option also. A user defined or fixed, you can choose it. All right, and here also we have this uh, member forces, so you can uh, define the uh, force. All right. 
can define the forces. These options are available and you can define the member number just as a identity data. Right, so this is uh, for your analytical model. And we also have uh, this. Load cases and load combination to define the loads. All right, uh, so for that you can go to this analyze tab also. Here we also have this load cases. And this load combinations. Options we have and for analytical model settings, you can go to this settings. Uh, so OK, so this is the uh, boundary condition setting. So about the boundary condition, I will come to uh, this option later. Uh, so we have some load cases to define. So generally we we have available. Uh, nine types of load here you can okay uh, so here you can see that uh, generally we have eight types of uh, loads already available so you can create some load cases you can define load cases like this okay so how you can just create so suppose like uh, this one you want to uh, so for that let me delete it the seismic load let me delete it so first what you have to do first you have to add in this load nature. First you have to create a load nature. All right, so here go for this add and there you just. Here you just go for the name seismic. OK, that is added right now and here we will define the load. So go for duplicate, duplicate any of this and then you can change it. Go for duplicate and here give it a name and like. Uh, hello, am I audible? Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. yes, sir. Yes. Uh, so here you can see that uh, you can you can define the name. Fine. And the case number and the nature. The nature is this seismic. It will be listed after that and the category, the load. So it will be available here. OK, so you can see that this seismic loads is available. So. How many type of load is there? One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine. OK, so you have nine types of load available within this. Uh, Revit. OK. So this load case is defined. So this how you can add multiple load, but the category you have to define from this uh, nine types. OK, so this one is defined. This one is created. And then you can go for this load option and you can choose that it will be a point load, line load, area load, uh, hosted line load, these things. OK, so right now this point load is selected and you can choose the point load. Like this, you can choose the point load. And for that you can choose the load case. What will be the load case that you right now selected? Uh, that will be the load case and orient it uh, to project or work plane. So work plane where you are placing right now or you, if you are placing uh, from a uh, level view. So there you can uh, go for work plane. So it will be associated with that particular work plane. OK, so here you can define the forces. So these options are available to define forces, momentum. OK. And this is how we will uh, define loads. So for each point you can define loads and uh, you can create some load combinations also. Like uh, you can define the dead load and the live load together uh, with a combination. So. Let me show you how we can do it. So for that we have this load combination window. 
this is the load combination window and here we have this formula window and this load combination usage window. Fine. Now uh, you can uh, create a particular load case uh, before that. All right, you can create particular load cases before that and then go for this load combination. First, what you have to do first, you have to create a combination name first. Click on edit and then you give it a name. So let me give it a name like. Uh, First live. OK, and then you see that this add option is available right now and this add option is available right now. OK, so when I'll add this one. Add so here you can see that DL1 that is a date load. In the load case, we have this date load, right? So that is we are going to add. So click on add. OK, and then again you can add another one. So for that you can choose like live load in the load case. There is just live load. So before that you have to create in uh, load case and you can provide the load factor like two. So it will be added in the formula so here you can see and the type is combination. So the type will be combination and the state. Uh, so like serviceability is there, so you can choose uh, for this to be ultimate. So just a second, let me go for all and here you have to go for ultimate. So this one will just uh, filter it out. OK, and let me delete. Let me delete here. So here it will filter it out. Only the ultimate will ultimate state will be visible. So here if you go for all, so all these will be visible like serviceability ultimate will be visible and here you need to Add one, just, just select this, then only you can add. Go for the usage. So here you provide the usage total load. Slide. OK. And it will be added here in the usage. So check on it. Set can see right. So you can click on this OK now. And now this load combination is added. This is created right now. And then you can go for this uh, boundary condition with this. Like uh, the point or the area you can choose. Oh, sorry, not this boundary condition. This is going to be the load option. OK, and here let me go for this area load. And I will not create the area. I will go for the posted area load, so I will select this. Posted like this. OK. Fine. This is the area load. So here you can see that this is the uh, load case is there. You can choose what will be the load case you are defining. Okay, and then go for its type and area force scale. So the scale you can choose can decrease it. One okay, and this is the option. Okay, and the forces you can define all the forces, right?
OK, now let me show you uh, about this uh, boundary condition. So for. Let me go for point and. Here you can choose uh, this would be fixed or uh, pinned or roller you can choose. So let's go this fixed and this way I think this. So this is this at fixed position, right? Boundary condition is fixed. So for each, you can define it. Okay, so there also you can define it. And for particular line, like uh, this one, you can go for this boundary condition. For each line, you can define the boundary condition. You can go with this line and then you can choose this line option and together you can. Define. Go for area, so you will select this. You select like this. OK. Right. So here it is not applicable, so you can uh, just choose what is the right option for your boundary condition. And now we have this load option. So for this uh, hosted area load. Uh, this is the dead load, right? So for uh, live load, what you can do, you can go for area load and you can draw it. All right, so you can draw it on the work plane. So for that, go to the uh, roof level. You can go to this roof level and you can choose the particular area. Let me go for this. We'll go for this support. Or else you can choose like this area where it is applicable. OK, so this much area uh, where the live load is applicable, so you can go for this live load and go for finish. And where it will be oriented, it will be oriented as per the work plane, right? So let's go for finish. And you can check it in 3D. So this one where I have placed, I had to place on roof. Let me delete it. Let's go to the roof option there. And again, go for this load option. Go for area load. Go to set and the work plane is level roof. That is set. Now let me go to this. And let's go for finish. Now let me check in 3D. Yeah, so here it is. OK. And uh, now you can again go for this uh, line load to draw it. And point load is there, I have already mentioned. And if you are going for the hosted, so for a uh, uh, particular uh, member, you can just choose at that end of that, it will be hosted. Uh, as per the host element, it will be placed on that load and all. Okay, so this way, we will be providing all this. Here also we have this check member supports. You 
go to analyze support option is there okay so you just select that element and then go for that support option just uh, check member supports are there or not so this is just to check okay and one more important thing uh, before uh, going to the analyze before going for the analysis you must mention the right material also right uh, so why this is important suppose for this one go for edit and edit and the right material if you have the right material so for that you have these physical properties this thermal properties so you have to mention these also okay you need these information you have to define this information before going to the uh, analysis okay so here you have to mention that uh, compression strength and all these uh, information the thermal information you need to mention as per that it will it will read the data okay so the material is also important for your structural element you need to provide all these informations so this is how we do it generally so for your structural element you have all this so this is this is all about and this is the last class of your structure from tomorrow we will start navis work that's all for today